Hey, I'm Laren, this is Knife Steel Nerds. Today we are talking about a brand new exclusive steel called M390MK. It was announced by Microtech last month. Uh, that is the first I had heard about it. And Microtech has said some things about what it is. They have not released an official chemistry. Uh, for example, they said Microtech worked closely with the engineers at Bowler to tweak the properties of M390 for better edge retention, corrosion resistance, and polishing. What we did is uh, we've been enjoying the you know the Bowler products now for a good long while, and um, you know we've been buying it billet at a time. Mm -hmm. So our, our our steel consumption has been when we place our orders, we we're already planning for 2025. So as we're making our billets, you know the engineers came back to us and said, hey, would you like to, you know, if we were to tweak this just a little bit, is there anything you'd like to see a little bit better in the steel? And it's like. My God, the, the, the M390 is as good as it gets as far as I'm concerned, but maybe a little bit better edge dexterity or edge holding ability, maybe a little bit better ductility and some other little attributes. So they were able to tweak the chemistry enough for us to just give us a little bit of extra icing or a little bit of extra, you know, you know, a little extra spice. I don't know how else to say it. I like that. But, you know, it's not like out in left field. It's still M390, but it is a tweak modification to what we're currently using and it's called the M390MK, and it is exclusive to Microtech. A Microtech employee, Ray Helms, he has a YouTube channel called X-Ring, and he said that the steel has a more controlled and higher carbon content, which lends itself to more consistent heat treat and a few other advantages. And in another comment, he said that the difference between M390MK and M390 is just a more regulated and controlled carbon content. So apparently the only difference between the two steels is carbon content. So we're gonna talk about what that means and uh, what Ray Helms means by a more regulated carbon content. Uh, the other thing we need to discuss is the name. As far as I know, they haven't said what the MK stands for. Presumably that stands for Microtech Knives. So Ray Helms also confirmed that that name did not come from Bowler. That's a name that Microtech came up with. So Microtech Knives seems more likely than anything else, though it would be interesting if the MK stood for Mortal Kombat or Michael Kors, but somehow I doubt it. Uh, so when we talk about composition of a steel, there isn't really any fixed composition. So if you look at the data sheet for a steel, they'll give you the average value. So here is regular M390. It's got 1.9% carbon, it's got 20% chromium, 1% moly, 4% vanadium, and 0.6% tungsten. Now for any steel, they can't hit exactly those values every time, so there's a range. For a steel with a standard specification like D2, there are required composition ranges for each element to qualify as D2. So even though the average composition for D2 is 1.5% carbon and 12% chromium, there are allowable ranges. For D2, it's 1.4 to 1.6 carbon and 11 to 13% chromium. Now, so those are required ranges for a specification, but a company might also have their own internal ranges. So they might say, for our D2, we don't want 1.4 to 1.6 carbon. We want 1.5 to 1.6 carbon because we can hit a tighter range and so that'll give us more consistent properties. For a steel that a company develops themselves, there is no required specification. They came up with the steel. And so all they have is their own internal specification, their own target. And that isn't always public. You might see it on certain certification sheets that they will send you, but I don't know what those ranges are for M390. So for 1.9% carbon, it might be something like 1.85 to 1.95% carbon. For chromium, it might be 19 and a half to 20 and a half. Those might be a little uh, narrower than our real. I don't know what the actual values are. So the range they shoot for, that's based on their capabilities. You know, if they're having to throw away 10 or 20 or 30% of their steel, they're gonna widen the range so they're not throwing so much away. In some cases, they might set a range a little tighter than they might want just because they know the steel won't meet certain properties if they don't. So if they say like, oh, if we're under such and such carbon percentage, the steel isn't going to harden correctly, then that might dictate what the minimum or maximum value of something is. So when he talks about having a more controlled and higher carbon content, that presumably means that Bowler is going to guarantee them a tighter carbon range than their normal internal range for M390. 
So does that mean they're just going to be on the upper end of the M390 range that they have, or are they gonna bump up the range a little bit than what they typically use? That hasn't really been clarified by Microtech. I'd be interested to find out. So uh, you might ask, why don't I just buy an M390 MK knife and measure the composition? Well, that has its own difficulties. You know, as Microtech is describing the steel, it's a small change, it's a tweak to the composition. And when you measure a steel, there's also the calibration of your instrument. And so your calibration for what you're measuring might be a little different than what's at Bowler. For example, when I measured some M390 steel a few years ago, I measured only 18.87% chromium against the spec, which is an average of 20, which seems a little low, even allowing for them to have some range. So is this just a very low chromium heat of M390? or is the calibration of the device I used uh, just reading low on chromium, or both. And so if I had measured some M390MK and gotten a chromium measurement uh, like this, I might assume that they dropped the chromium on the steel, which would in fact not be true. So we really have to analyze the steel based on what Microtech said, because a measurement might be misleading, because we're talking about a small tweak to the steel, not some big jump like the vanadium is 2% higher or the chromium is 2% lower or something like that. So you might be wondering how would higher carbon affect the properties? Well, the main thing that carbon does in steel is increase its potential hardness. It also decreases the corrosion resistance of the steel a little bit. So you see this in like 440A, B, and C. 440C has the highest carbon. It's got the highest potential hardness, also the lowest toughness and the lowest corrosion resistance of any steel in the 440 series. So for M390MK, assuming it's a relatively small increase in carbon, uh, we might expect that it would have a little bit higher hardness as heat treated. So here is a completely made up chart showing the distribution of hardness that they would have had with M390 with a target hardness of 59 Rockwell. Then there's some distribution because there's hundreds of knives that they might be heat treating. There's small variations in the heat treating furnaces, small variations in the chemistry of the steel, and so they get some range of hardness. If the M390MK has a slightly higher average carbon and a slightly tighter carbon range, we would expect the resulting hardness to be a tiny bit higher and the range to be a tiny bit smaller. So how does this line up with what Microtech said? Microtech claimed improved edge retention, improved corrosion resistance, and improved polishing. So would this tweak lead to improved edge retention? Uh, maybe. So it would have slightly more carbide and slightly higher hardness. So both of those can result in slightly higher edge retention. Now it would have been easier just to give a tweak to the heat treatment and have a little bit higher hardness out of the heat treatment. In fact, you know, shooting for one or two Rockwell higher would lead to a much greater change in edge retention than a small tweak to the carbon content. But we can give them that one the edge retention is probably a tiny bit higher. That might be hard to actually measure, but statistically that should be true. Oh, the other claim they made was improved corrosion resistance. I don't know how that can be the case. So increasing carbon in a stainless steel almost always, well, maybe not even almost, always decreases corrosion resistance. I cannot think of a scenario where it wouldn't. So why are they claiming an improvement in corrosion resistance? I don't know. Maybe there's some other change to the composition they aren't telling us about. But even if they also increased the chromium along with the carbon, then that would result in the same corrosion resistance, not an increase. So they might be mistaken, or it could be that there are other changes to the composition that they haven't told us about. The other one that they talk about is improved polishing. Again, I don't know how an increase in carbon improves polishing. So that one is also confusing to me. Maybe someone from Microtech can clarify on this point why they expect the polishing to improve. But again, polishing, that's more on their end in manufacturing, not so much an area where the end consumer cares about. So I'm not sure where, where that one is coming from. Okay, uh, I think to summarize, M390MK, it's a very small change to M390. Uh, that's from Microtech's own words. Uh, you know, they even said, Tony said, it's still M390. 
you know, it's a tweak to M390. But, you know, it's not like out in left field, it's still M390, but it is a tweak modification to what we're currently using. Properties is probably unrealistic. Apparently it will help them get a little more consistent results out of their M390, a little bit tighter hardness range, and according to them, an improvement in polishing for whatever reason. So I think this change to the end consumer may or may not be noticeable. Uh, but maybe the fact that they have an MK at the end of the M390 will help in their marketing because there are certain buyers that are interested in exclusive steels or just want to try a new steel. So we'll have to see how it ends up for Microtech. Uh, so that's the end of this discussion. I wanted to thank my Patreon supporters. They help support this channel. They bring in money so we can do experiments and look at new steels and uh, you know, maybe we might find a reason to buy an M390 MK knife if we think there's some measurement we could do to learn more. Uh, but anyway, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.